Hello everyone and welcome back to the other session that is session 8 of principles of inheritance and variation. So you know this is the overview of chapter that we have been doing for the last 7 sessions. We saw a lot of important terminologies. We saw the 7 Mendel's experimental characters. We saw Mendel's laws of inheritance. We saw the deviations. You remember we saw linkage, then we saw incomplete dominance, pleiotropy, co-dominance, chromosomal theory of inheritance. Genes are present on chromosomes given by Sutton and Bori. Then we saw sex determination. You remember male heterogamity, female heterogamity. Then we talked about different types of mutations. And the longest part of this chapter was genetic disorders, right? We talked about so many genetic disorders here and I see all of you have now assembled here. So did you do the homework? Did you write down the table that I asked you for all the genetic disorders so that it's just there in front of you? How many of you did the homework? I hope you guys did the homework. You see if you do all these homeworks that I give you, you know, it will give you a very nice habit because whenever you write something, you know, it goes straight in your head because Visual impact is a lot. That is why I always try to tell you, you know, do things by seeing the diagrams. You remember the difference between polygenic and pleiotropy. If you remember those two diagrams, you will easily remember the difference between them. So, I am hoping that a lot of you did your homework. But if some of you did not, here it is. Okay, just take a screenshot of this and save it on your computer, but please write it down with your own hands later. And all those very good students who did the homework, just check it out. Okay, just check it out once so that you realize that there is nothing that nowhere that you have gone wrong. So this is the whole table. So you can take a screenshot or snapshot or whatever of it and save it. But please don't take printouts. Okay, write it down with your hands. It is not something. It will just take like 2-3 minutes for you to write it down. Good. Then let's proceed. So this was the question you remember yesterday we discussed. If father is hemophilic and mother is homozygous normal, predict the genotypes of children and grandchildren. And here we see this is the hemophilic father. Okay, so this is the hemophilic father, this is the normal mother and these are the children and all of you gave the right answer yesterday. Okay, now phenotypically all the four kids are completely normal. None of them will have the disorder because hemophilia is a recessive disorder. But we see that there are two carrier females because they took this X gene from their father. And then they asked you about the grandchildren. So when you talk about the grandchildren, what you will do? You will take this carrier female and then you will cross it with a normal male. And now again you see four progenies, right? So one is a carrier daughter, one is hemophilic son, normal daughter and normal son. So you know yesterday there was this question, what about the genotypic ratio? So always be very careful when you read the question, whether they are asking you, how many children will be hemophilic or they are asking you how many sons will be hemophilic or they are asking you how many daughters will be hemophilic. If they ask you for example in this case how many children will be hemophilic then only one out of four is hemophilic therefore the ratio will be 25 percent. If they are asking you how many sons will be hemophilic then it is one son out of two. So then the ratio is 50%. Okay, so whenever you read the question, you know, be very careful what are they asking you for because this is a very subtle difference, you know, that can lead to negative marking in a question that you know how to do and you have taken out the right answer. So always be very careful if they are asking you the ratio of children or if they are asking you the ratio of son or the daughter. Okay, so another important thing that we need to see here is in this generation, there is a diseased father. In this generation, there is no disease. But again, in this generation, there is a disease. Because one of them is diseased. Okay, not all, but one of them is at least diseased. But you see, in this generation, there is 
not even a single individual who has the disease because it is a recessive disorder and that is why we can say there is skipping of generation and you have to remember this that this skipping of generation is a very common characteristic of all the recessive disorders whether it is sex or whether it is autosomal so whenever it is a recessive disorder there will be skipping of generation okay because you need x chromosome from both of them you need it from both of them so mostly there will be skipping of the generation now another thing that we have to see here is you see there is a hemophilic father the hemophilic father is not doing anything to the sons why because son will take just the y chromosome from the father so the father is giving the defective gene only to the daughters and now if you come here and see the mother is giving this defective to the son and as a result of which the son turns out to be hemophilic so you see there is this pattern from father to daughters from mother to son it is the opposite sex you know that is generally given of course you can say you know here also the mother is giving the hemophilic gene the hemophilic allele but of course you know because it is a recessive disorder this will mask its expression okay also there will be a normal son but this kind of pattern you know this criss cross pattern that if you see a diseased father there are more chances of seeing a child a female that is a carrier if you see a diseased mother there are more chances that the son will be hemophilic of course there will be normal sons as well but there are more chances for a son to have hemophilia if the mother has it or if the mother is a carrier so this is written here so it is that what is this it is a transmission of gene from mother to son or father to daughter and what is it here the criss cross inheritance or the skip generation where we don't see any disorder in one generation okay here we saw that one of them has here we saw one of them has but none of them have it here so this is called as skipping of generation so in which a character is inherited to the second generation through the carriers of the first generation so this is the carrier this is the carrier and this carrier mother is making the son hemophilic because of course you know see sex related disorders are much more common in sons than in daughters why is this reason because the son needs just one abnormal allele one abnormal x allele is enough to cause this disorder and yesterday also we discussed this you remember when i said that in case of sons only one is enough because there is no dominant capital h will be dominant on small h okay but if the small h is present alone there is nothing else to mask it for example if you look at this hemophilic son you know x h y it has just one hemophilic allele but it is still expressed because there is nothing to suppress it and this sex link characters you know they generally exhibit this criss cross inheritance from father to daughter it can be a carrier it can be diseased from mother to son okay so this is criss cross inheritance good so then we proceed and today we will talk about pedigree analysis and i am telling you there will be multiple questions or at least there will be one question on pedigree analysis don't be scared of it we are going to discuss very easy techniques how we are going to solve it after we have discussed all different types of possibilities okay so let's begin so do you guys know these symbols just write it down quickly in the chat box like have you done this before do you know like what how do you represent a normal male how do you represent a normal female how do you represent the diseased or affected individuals have you done this before okay if you have done this before it is very nice but otherwise you know again take a snapshot of this and if you don't see the characters very well this is the same diagram from the continuity material so you can just go and read through this but i will discuss the most important ones okay so this is the male normal represented by a square 
the normal female is represented by a circle okay then the affected individuals are always represented by the colors they are always the affected individuals and then this is what is mating you know between unrelated individuals and the heterozygous conditions are generally represented by half colored you know this one here for both the conditions okay but now what happens you know in the questions they will not tell you this that if it is a heterozygous or if it is a carrier so from the point of view of questions the most important ones are 1 2 and 3 you should know how a normal male is you should know how a normal female is and you should know how the diseased individuals look like okay so you don't know this before which is completely fine so you see the thing is that they will always ask you in the form of pedigree analysis but you should still know all these symbols because sometimes you know maybe in your cbse exam or maybe in some other exams they can ask you you know what does this symbol represent okay so a square will represent a normal male a circle will represent a normal female and if they are completely filled these are affected individuals okay and these affected individuals can be like homozygous heterozygous or whatever you know we don't know but they are just affected so depending upon whether the disease is a recessive disease whether the disease is a dominant disease anywhere when the phenotype is affected it will be colored it will be a colored square colored circle okay another is this is the mating between unrelated individuals okay this is for example the father this is for example the mother this is consanguineous mating or marriage that is between related individuals you know between cousins like between first cousins or between the same family then this is again the heterozygous condition and from the point of view of questions they will not tell you you know when they give you questions who is heterozygous or not another important is still birth you know the birth that took place but it was still the child was born dead and then it is fraternal twins they can be of the same sex also you see this is the fraternal twins or the non identical twins when two sperms are going inside the egg and then these are identical twins here okay so these are the things but from the point of view of questions you just need to know three square male circle female colored diseased good but you know just go through this table familiarize yourself with it so now we talk about autosomal recessive can any one of you or i would be very happy if all of you can write down one example of autosomal recessive disorder that we have done if you remember the genes are present on autosome and it is expressed only in the recessive condition for example if this is the dominant if this is the recessive for that particular disease this will be normal again this will be normal only this will be diseased Can you write down the name of one autosomal recessive disorder that we have studied or if you don't remember just write it down don't remember Let me see how many of you remember you can use your cheat sheets or anything you want just don't go on google and start typing okay If you don't know just do, tell me don't know but you can use your cheat sheet good very good i see some answers coming up good sickle cell anemia thalassemia so these were autosomal recessive disorders okay so there are certain characteristics again you see here you know this is a pedigree chart you see these 1 2 3 4 5 6 these are the number of individuals that are there so number 1 and number 2 are the parents square is the father circle is the mother and then when they produce kids there are again three kids the kids are 6 7 8 okay this is how you are going to interpret it there are three types of kids 6 7 and 8 now the sixth kid got married to five and this is not a contagious marriage this is totally unrelated individual okay so this is the marriage and from the father and mother six is the father five is the mother the kids are 13 and 
So this is how you are going to interpret it. Okay, and again 1 and 2, 3 and 4. So 1 and 2 is one family, 3 and 4 is another family. They are completely unrelated families. And then in the end, this child 8 is married to the child 9. So this is how you will see, you know, pedigree charts. Again, what is this colored thing? This colored thing is the person who is diseased. And here we are talking about autosomal recessive disorder where only and only this person who inherits both the recessive genes will have the disease. For example, we saw in sickle cell anemia and in thalassemia. So this occurs in both the sexes with equal frequency. Now try to pay attention. You know, I know there are a lot of, you know, points for each one of them. But just try to understand when we are doing one. So right now just try to understand what happens in an autosomal recessive condition. And what is a pedigree analysis anyways by the way? A pedigree analysis will tell you, you know, how the trait passes from one generation to another. Instead of doing this cross, you know, the question that we started our lecture with, it was a cross. Instead of doing that cross, they will ask you in the form of pedigree analysis, you know. And again, this is a very old technique, but they will ask you in your examinations. But you know, in real world, when you become doctors and you will become doctors if you do hard work, if you attend all the lectures, you do all the homework, you practice questions. When you become doctors, you will realize that nobody is using pedigree analysis these days. Okay, today we have much, much more advanced techniques to detect, you know, if an individual will have a certain disease or not. But still we are doing this because it is important from the point of view of examinations. Let's come back. So this autosomal recessive disorder appears in both the sexes with equal frequency. You know, when we say equal frequency, don't just start counting, okay, you know, 4 here, 5 here. No, that is not equal frequency. It is close to 50-50. Okay, for example, if you look at here, you know, the males, if you count this is 1, then this is 2, then this is 3, and then this is 4, and females are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, it is close enough. Okay, it's not that it is like uh, all female and one male. Okay, so when such kind of condition is there, then it is an autosomal recessive disorder. And then, trait tends to skip generations. This is a very important point that will help you to solve a lot of pedigree analysis questions. What do they mean by skipping? You see here 1 and 2, 3 and 4, they produce babies. 1 and 2 has 8, 3 and 4 has 9. So none of the 8 and 9 have the disease but one of their child that is number 17 here has the disease. So, is it, it is possible, okay, that a child who has a disease is born to the parents who don't have the disease, which is affected offsprings are usually born to unaffected parents, okay. So, this is an autosomal recessive, this will be small a, small a, okay, and none of them here are having the disease, again, here, this one is small a, small a. So, what do you think? This will be capital A, small a, capital A, small a. Okay. That is how you have to interpret it. But, you know, in general cases, so, I, when I was, you know, in my uh, 12th standard, when I was preparing for NEET, at that time, we had different examinations. So, when I was preparing, you know, I was so confused because, you know, I would always start writing, okay, you know, this is this, so this should be A, A, capital A. But over the course of this lecture, you will realize that not always you need to know, you know, what is the genotype. Sometimes with these points, you can just think and do it. Okay, so in case of autosomal recessive disorder, affected offsprings are usually born to unaffected parents. When both the parents are heterozygous, approximately one-fourth of the progeny will be affected. You see here, right? You see, both of them are heterozygous and one out of three, not one out of four. So, these ratios are always approximate, okay? So, that is why, you know, and if you do a cross of this, you can easily realize that only one of the individual will have small a, small a, okay? And it appears more frequently amongst uh, children of consanguine marriages, you know, marriages between relatives. When, there are the, when the cousins are married, then these diseases are more common. 
so this is about autosomal recessive disorder the most important thing you have to remember is it tends to skip generations usually and affected offsprings are usually born to unaffected parents these two points will help you solve the questions good then let's proceed autosomal dominant disorder what is autosomal dominant disorder this person will have the disease this person will have the disease this person will be completely normal okay this is autosomal dominant disorder why autosomal genes are present on the autosomes again it appears in both the sexes in equal frequency both the sexes transmit the trait to their offspring okay now if you see at parent 1 and parent 2 both of them have the disease and it is a dominant disease and now if you look at the individuals you know only 5 and 6 are having the disease 7 does not have the disease so what do you think will be the genotype of 1 and 2 write it down in the chat box it will be capital a capital a or it will be capital a small a for 1 and 2 what it will be Quickly write down in the chat box. It is an autosomal dominant disorder. And you see one of the offspring, the offspring number 7 does not have the disease. So what will be the genotype of 1 and 2? Quickly tell me by writing it in the chat box. Be careful, you know, write capital and small. So, two individuals in an autosomal dominant disorder are producing a progeny that does not have a disease. So, what is going to be the genotype of the parents? And in case of autosomal dominant, both capital A, capital A and capital A, small a are the diseased ones. Good. Perfect. You see, so these are both capital A, small a, capital A, small a and that is why this small a, small a is this one okay and that is why you know it does not skip generation there will be no skipping of generation in case of autosomal dominant disorder because only small a small a and small a small a are the ones that are without the disease and if both of them are without the disease they cannot produce an individual you know that is having the disease so therefore affected offsprings must have at least one affected parent for example if you now look at parent number three and four four is affected three is not affected so obviously know that three has this genotype four can have only this genotype because they produce one normal and one allele comes from the mother one allele comes from the father okay that is how you are going to try to interpret these pedigree analysis so, in case of autosomal dominant, affected offspring must have at least one affected parent. So, when one parent is affected, heterozygous and other parent is unaffected, approximately half of the offsprings will be affected. If you again look at parent number 3 and 4, okay, one of them is heterozygous, one is unaffected and the progeny 8 and 9, 50, 50 percent. Again, you know, these ratios are not always 100 percent. It can be like skewed sometimes and unaffected parents do not transmit the trait for example 7 and 8 you see here right they are unaffected how are they going to transmit they don't have the dominant gene so that is why you can easily distinguish between an autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive trait by seeing the parents by seeing if by seeing if there is any skipping of the generation We have seen pattern baldness as an autosomal dominant. In that case, we saw that the frequency will be different in different sexes. Yeah, because you know, you see, that was sex influenced. Okay, it was an autosomal dominant trait, but it was also influenced by the sex. What happened there was that in case of males, this was bald and in case of females this was not bald okay so there it is a little bit different you know there you have to really 
see which sex is transmitting what which sex is transmitting what that is actually a different case you know they will never give you pattern baldness for pedigree analysis they will always give you the straightforward examples for pedigree analysis so don't worry about that this was a question you know by kavya that pattern baldness as an autosomal dominant and in that case we saw that frequencies will be different in different sexes because you know there it was influenced by the sex here we are talking directly just about the genotype where we say that capital a capital a is always dominant capital a small a is always again dominant and heterozygous and this is the recessive don't confuse yourself with pattern baldness because that was an entirely different example that is an exception also you know because it is a sex influence trait although the genes are present on autosomes very good question actually the genes are present on autosomes but then there are other things are also coming into play you know the levels of testosterone are coming into play so those things don't need to worry about that will be like an entirely different thing okay good so now we talk about x linked dominant and again you have to be very careful between autosomal dominant and x linked dominant so in this case what happens both males and females are affected and often more females than males are affected okay it is an x linked dominant trait so what happens like for example this is okay let's proceed first it does not skip generations so both autosomal dominant and x linked dominant will not skip generations okay why because individuals cannot be born to unaffected parents so now let us look here you know for example this is the female and now this is the male again you know when you are doing autosomes use a as the gene and whenever you are talking about the x linked always use xx and xy okay it is always easier so now this is x linked dominant and you see that there are unaffected kids so obviously you know this one for example let's say the disease is represented by capital h for example so this is heterozygous obviously so now what will happen so this is a diseased so obviously it took this one from the mother and this it took from the male and then this is again diseased so this will be x h x and these are the two normal ones okay so you have to always see you know you will easily get to know whether it is a heterozygous or whether it is a homozygous in case of dominant and both recessive by just seeing the progenies here there are also unaffected individuals so therefore the mother will be heterozygous and then affected sons must have an affected mother okay there should be at least one affected allele in case of mother for example this here you see there should be at least one so that the son can take this one and then obviously it takes the y from the father affected daughters must have either an affected mother or an affected father because see the affected daughters need only one of the x chromosome to be bad okay one of the damaged or one of the diseased allele so it doesn't matter for the daughters if the mother is the one or the father is the one but in case of sons it should always be the mother because it is an x linked disorder affected fathers will pass the trait to all their daughters why again you know a daughter will take one x chromosome from the mother and one from the father and father has only one x chromosome okay for example if you now look at the parent number 7 it is an affected father you see both the daughters are affected and both the sons are normal you see because definitely you know the one x chromosome that the father has is the diseased one the allele x that he has is the diseased one and that definitely goes to the daughters as a result of which both the daughters will be affected because you need only one in case of a dominant disease and then affected mothers if heterozygous will pass the trait to half of their sons and half of their daughters as you can see in parent number 1 half of the sons and half of the daughters okay good then let's proceed this is the last one that is x linked recessive okay so in this case again for the females 
both of them should be the affected ones in case of male only one is affected and then they have the disorder so more males than females are affected and why is this why are more males than females affected because males will need only one defective allele whereas females will need both the defective alleles so that is why you know whenever there can be sometimes this direct questions you know why are these uh, traits observed more in males than in females because males generally need only one defective copy so affected sons are usually born to unaffected mothers okay affected son here you see nine affected son is born to unaffected mother why in this case the the mother will be a carrier okay and that is why it can pass that x chromosome to the son again the trait skips generation if you look here one and two is producing the kid four the kid four doesn't have the disorder and then it appears at nine why because it will be carried there is a carrier here so there is this skipping of generation so whenever there is skipping of generation it is a recessive disorder then approximately half of carrier mother's sons are affected it is never passed from the father to the son that will never happen if the father is diseased mother is normal all the daughters will be carriers the disease will never pass from the father to the son it will be again this criss cross pattern that we saw in the example of hemophilia all daughters of affected fathers are carriers just try to remember that example of hemophilia okay that we started our lecture with good so this was all the theoretical knowledge and it was way too much now how do you apply it so there are certain steps to interpret a pedigree chart first of all always try to determine if it is an autosomal or if it is a x linked x linked or it is sex linked okay so this is the first step if most of the males are affected then it is x linked and then try to check for you know criss cross inheritance what was criss cross inheritance that the father can result to can lead to a, a defective allele to the daughters a mother will lead to a defective son okay this criss cross the opposite sex father to daughter and then from mothers to son so if most of the males are affected then it is x linked and again why because in case of male you need only one affected in case of sex chromosome in case of females you again need both but this is not the case in case of autosomes you know because autosomes there is no y chromosome they are equal okay so then there is the ratio is 50 50 approximately okay this should be very clear the x linked diseases are observed more in males only and only reason is because there is only one x chromosome in case of autosomes both the chromosomes are equal that is why the ratio is 50 50% so first once you have determined if it is autosomal or if it is x linked then you have to determine if it is dominant or recessive which is the easiest part if the disorder is dominant one of the parent must have the disorder if the disorder is recessive neither parent has to have the disorder because they can be heterozygous and in case of recessive heterozygous is normal and then this is important if skipping of generation takes place then it is recessive you know this is one thing that will really help you to solve these pedigree analysis if you just see okay you know this is diseased now in the next generation there is no diseased child in the third generation again disease then it is recessive that doesn't happen in case of dominant so the first point is the most tricky you have to determine whether it is autosomal or whether it is x linked then skipping of generation you will be easily able to answer and then once you have practiced a lot of question this is an even more quicker tip to follow the pedigree analysis check the ratio of affective individual if it is skewed to one type you know if you have more males then it is x linked if it is 50 50 if it is then it is autosomal and then also check for this criss cross inheritance you know whether from uh, father to daughter and from mother to son if you can identify this criss cross patterning then it will be very easy then you know it is sex linked 
if skipping of the generation takes place it is recessive if not it is dominant and then very very quick tips for pedigree analysis is check for skip generation check for criss cross inheritance skip generation is always recessive criss cross is always x linked and if you see none then it is the opposite okay so we will again go through this because now we will start solving the questions okay theory part is one thing for pedigree analysis that nobody is going to ask you you have to understand the theory part to solve the question if most of the males are affected it is x linked because males need only one x to be diseased if the ratio is 50 50 approximately you know sometimes you say ah there are six females there are five males no this is not 50 50 no that is not the case it should be like very very you have to see it very vigilantly okay approximately 50 50 and i think dominant and recessive will be the most easy to identify you can check for skipping of generation you can check for parents if both the parents are affected then obviously the child will be affected okay so an unaffected child so an affected child can be born to unaffected parents only if it is recessive because the parents can be heterozygotes is it clear i know it's a lot of information but is this slide clear let me know if it is clear and then we'll directly go to the questions let me know if it is clear just focus on this okay we did a lot of theory you know try to go over that again and again later but for now and for later also actually you know this is the most important thing but if you have some small doubts here and there you can always go on those slides you know and look okay how is it this how is it that i don't see a lot of thumbs ups today i don't know why <laughs> i see uh, today also not a lot of you are here but okay it's fine good now i start getting thumbs ups then let's begin good so what is this type of trait is it autosomal recessive is it sex linked is it holandric what is holandric by the way when it is from the y chromosome okay and in that case all the males will be affected none of the females will be affected so that is the easiest to find out okay and they will not give you any question about the holandric genes by the way because it's very easy so autosomal recessive sex linked holandric autosomal dominant what you have to check if there is any criss cross pattern you have to check skipping of generation you have to check if the progeny is skewed let's see for pedigree analysis you have to do a lot of practice okay but right now try to see first of all if there is skipping of generation yes no yes it is recessive no it is dominant okay then see if it is criss cross pattern good i start getting some of the answers but please please try to answer guys try to answer your own answer what you feel only then that will help you quickly try to answer check for skipping of generation check for criss cross inheritance check if it is 50 50 if it is 50 50 it is autosomal if it is more males then it is sex linked i don't see a lot of answers if you are completely lost we can revise again let me know whatever it is just let me know yes i start getting some more answers but i want more <laughs> good see all of you are correct did it help so it is an autosomal uh, dominant disorder there is no skipping of generation you know you can say okay this individual does not have the disease it's okay no they don't show that it is married to someone and there is skipping right it is an autosomal dominant disorder and you see that it is almost 50 50 right 1 2 3 uh females and 1 2 3 4 males 
I am very happy. But was it clear? Was it easy to interpret? You see, I know pedigree analysis is one of the areas, you know, where it is very confusing. But if you follow this, you know, skipping of generation, crisscross inheritance and seeing if the progeny, if it is 50-50 or if it is skewed towards males, then it will be very easy to answer. You see, you didn't even have to, you know, write down the genotypes or anything. Good. Then next question. So, which statement regarding the following pedigree is correct? Read the options very carefully. The trait is holandric. Holandric means it is present on the Y chromosome. Okay, then all the males will be affected. The parents are homozygous recessive. The parents are heterozygous. The parents are homozygous dominant. What is the right answer? I am very happy that a lot of you gave me the answer autosomal dominant and I am hoping that this technique helped. See, at some point, you know, you will be so confused. Maybe if it's a very tough question that you have to write the genotypes. But I am promising you, if you practice a lot, you know, 99.9% .9 of times you don't even have to see, you know, you don't even have to write the genotypes. But tell me the answer of this. Mm-hmm. I start getting some answers. I will wait for more of you to answer and then I will tell you the right answer. See, this is a very easy question, okay? Here maybe you have to write the genotypes, but if you have understood, you know, it will be very easy for you to answer. Perfect. So, all of you answered option number three, which is the right answer. Yay! So, the parents are heterozygous. Okay, that is why two of them have the disease and two of them don't have the disease. Let's proceed to the next question. See, this was CBSE 2019. I gave my 12th board in 2010. So, probably at my time also, you know, I practiced this question. <laughs> okay, now, tell me the right answer. Study the pedigree chart given below. Take your time. It's okay, you know. For pedigree analysis, you can always take out some time to solve this question. Is it inheritance of a recessive sex-linked disease like hemophilia? Inheritance of sex-linked inborn error of metabolism like phenylketonuria? Inheritance of a condition like phenylketonuria as an autosomal recessive trait? The pedigree chart is wrong as it is not possible. Try to answer. You see, first read the options. One of the option itself is, you know, not right. But yeah, just try. Take your time. Okay. Also, you know, when you give me the answer, just write question number three and then give me the answer. Take your time. It's okay. Read the question properly, see if there is skipping of generation, see if it is a crisscross pattern. And then try to answer. Okay, I get some answers. I'm waiting for some more answers. Mm -hmm. So, inheritance of a recessive sex-linked disease like hemophilia, inheritance of sex-linked inborn error of metabolism like phenylketonuria, Inheritance of a condition like phenylketonuria as an autosomal recessive trait or the pedigree chart is wrong as it is not possible. 
<laughs> so this is a very interesting question by Manish. Ma'am, how five of springs? You know, I have a friend and he has four siblings. So the parents gave birth to five kids. That is why it is five. You know, whenever I talk about this, you know, and I make this uh, cross and then we see that, ah, okay, you know, that uh, there will be four possibilities. Those are the four genotypic possibilities. But of course, you can produce more kids, no? Like earlier times, you know, my, my parents, like my mom, she has five siblings. They were total five. My dad, they were total five kids. My grandfather, they were total seven kids. Of course, there is no contraceptive mechanism, no, that will stop producing kids after the fourth child. So you can definitely have more kids, okay? It's, it's okay. Like you can have even 100 kids, oof, that will be way too much. It is not reproductively possible. But you can have as many number of kids. Whenever we say, you know, one out of four, that is the ratio. If there are six kids, the ratio will automatically change. Okay. Okay. So, first I will tell you the right answer is three. Not all of you, none of you gave the right answer. All of you thought that it was inheritance of the sex-linked disease like chemo. Okay, which is not the right answer. The right answer is option number 3. It is again a recessive disorder here. Okay, so this individual has the disease and therefore these are both heterozygous parents here. Okay, and then there is skipping of generation. So, obviously we know. So, all of these are the diseased ones and you see the ratio is almost like okay here you know the problem was that there are two males and one female so you can always say ah you know more males than one females but there is no crisscross pattern here okay if you see here you know nothing is going on from the mother to the here this progeny and nothing is coming back so there is no crisscross kind of patterning so therefore it is not sex linked okay is it clear? Okay, let's just try to, you know, uh, do it like that. For example, let's say this is for phenylketonuria. Here. So, this is XPY. Again, this is XPY. And here, it should be XP, XP. Again, both of the individuals should be heterozygous. So, X, XP, X, X, P. Okay. And now, you know, X, X, P, sorry, X, P, ah, X, Y, and then X, X, P. So, this will explain you. So, now you see here. Here is the male and here is the female. So, if it is a sex link disorder, this is an affected female, which means it should take this defective from the father and this defective from the mother obviously this female should take one defective allele from the father because females inherit two x chromosomes one from the father one from the mother and to be defective it should have both defective ones but the father here is completely normal if it is an x linked disorder the father will be diseased that is why it is autosomal there is no crisscross patterning here. Is it clear? See, that is why it is important to do difficult questions, you know. So, this female solved everything. This female here, you know, she told you if it should be autosomal recessive, if it is sex-linked recessive or if it is autosomal recessive. It is autosomal recessive because if it would be sex-linked recessive, the father would be diseased. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. See, that is why it is very tricky to solve these pedigree analysis questions, okay? So, practice. Practice as much as you can. But tell me first, is it clear? You have to always try to relate and see, you know, whenever you answer that it is a sex link disease or if it is an autosomal disease. And here it was very clear because already in the first generation, you can see that. This female solved all the questions. So, let me know if it is clear or if it is all clear. <laughs> I 
I don't see thumbs ups. So if the female is diseased and if it is a recessive disorder that you obviously know because here there was skipping of generation then this diseased female has to take one X chromosome from the father and if the father has even one X chromosome it should be diseased which he is not. Mm -hmm. See the male parent you know this male parent is empty right. The male parent is empty which means the male parent is not diseased. It is normal X and Y. For this female who is diseased if you guys told me all of you told me it is an X linked disorder which means if XP XP is going to be for the female she should have one of the allele from the diseased father right. But that is not the case because father is completely normal father is normal XY. Is it clear Kavya? Is it clear guys like are you getting these concepts? See you will make mistakes in pedigree when you are practicing that is why you have to practice even more. So now you know you know whenever you see such kind of thing that a female is defective and the male is not then you know that it is not a sex linked recessive disorder. And it's always so see either a diseased parent can be represented as this or for females as this or they can be represented you know as we saw in the pedigree like completely shaded. So they are both diseased. Kavya did you get it? So the male here is normal. So whenever you see a diseased female you have to see if the father is diseased or not. If the father is normal then it is autosomal. Write it down. Write it down that whenever you see a diseased female just go and check the parents and the father should be definitely diseased. Okay, Kavya, I am waiting for you and also for others. I see a lot of thumbs ups that a lot of you have understood why this is an autosomal recessive trait and not a sex linked recessive trait. This one female solved all your doubts. Okay, then I will proceed. If there are questions, just let me know. We will come back to this one. Okay, Ames question time and Ames will always ask you weird question. So, read the question first. In Huntington's disease, the unaffected persons are homozygous for allele edge. Unaffected persons are homozygous for allele small edge. These are unaffected. So what is the disease? Is it dominant or is it recessive? If small h, small h is unaffected, then it is a dominant trait. Okay, they are already telling it you in a different way in the question. I don't know Kavya if you are very convinced <laughs> about the explanation but we will see the question again then. After we solve this question we will go back to the question again. So try to solve this one now. In Huntington's disease the unaffected persons are homozygous for the normal allele small h. So small h small h is unaffected which means capital H capital H and capital H small h will be affected it is a dominant disorder now try to tell me the answer the following is erroneous this pedigree has some problems why and they are already telling you you know it is not like x linked because it's allele h So give me the answer. Why is it erroneous? It shows both male and female affected by Huntington's disease. Either person 6 or 7 should have the disease if individual 11 shows the disease. At least one of the two children 8, 9 should have the disease or all of these. Okay. 
टेक योर टाइम पेडिग्री एनालिसिस जनरली टेक्स टाइम but try to answer we know that it is a dominant disorder we know it is an autosomal dominant disorder and if you are not able to solve then let me know i will guide you through i will give you hints <laughs> just write in the chat box hints Mm hmm. So read the question again. The following is erroneous because. Okay. all of you are answering d all of these but ah uh, as soon as i said that i saw one retracted message <laughs> don't think that if you are answering the different answer you are wrong because you were completely right and i i know who i know the student already knows who i am talking about okay let's go through this so they are telling you that it is a dominant disorder so it shows both male and female affected by huntington's disease and in case of autosomal dominant we said you know 50 50 so this answer is completely right it is not erroneous in case of autosomal disorders both male and female are 50 50 then let's go to c option first at least one of the two children 8 and 9 should have the disease why if both of these are heterozygous capital h small h capital h small h both of them can be small h small h and small h small h they don't need to have the disease okay they don't need to have the disease because these are these are both heterozygous and in heterozygous condition both of them are having the disease now either person 6 or 7 should have the disease if individual 11 shows the disease so if individual 11 is showing the disease it should be either capital h capital h capital h small h it should definitely have one capital h allele which means either parent 6 or parent 7 should have one capital h allele and that is not the case here that is why this pedigree is erroneous that is why that is what is the problem here either one of the parents should have this allele because an affected parent affected child cannot be born to affected parents affected child cannot be born to affected parents in case of an autosomal dominant disorder so the right answer is option number b is it clear and kavya was the only one who gave the right answer by the way but for others is it clear see that is why it shows both both male and female affected by the disease yeah okay either person 6 or 7 should have the disease if individual 11 shows the disease at least one of the two children should have the disease why why option c is right they don't need to have the disease if the parents are heterozygous they both can inherit small h small h small h small h and then they will be non diseased but the option b is correct because either person 6 or 7 should have the disease if individual 11 shows the disease because an individual cannot be born by unaffected parents in case of dominant disorder okay lakshmi i got your question we have the condition that they don't skip generation so what do you mean it will not be like that all the time 
here the question is different guys you need to try to understand the question they are giving you a pedigree analysis and they are saying that the following is erroneous there is a problem in this pedigree analysis this pedigree analysis is not correct and then you have to tell them why is it not correct okay the question is different i understand i told you that there will be skipping of generation but here that is not what they are asking you they are not asking you if it is autosomal dominant they are not asking you if it is autosomal recessive rather they are already telling it in the question that it is autosomal dominant they are already telling you in the question they are asking you what is the problem they are telling you that this pedigree is erroneous that is the question do you get it is it clear lakshmi the the question that they asked is why is this pedigree erroneous and obviously you know it is erroneous because the right would be that either 6 or 7 you know they have the disease then only the pedigree will be right is it clear or is it getting very confusing be honest if it's getting very confusing that is also okay with pedigree that happens but read the question properly they are not asking you here if it is autosomal dominant if it is autosomal recessive they are asking you that this pedigree that they have given you is erroneous erroneous means there is something wrong in this pedigree now you have to identify what is the thing that is wrong good but is it clear for everybody everybody answered option d but is it clear see that is why you know you have to solve aims questions aims will ask you difficult questions now all the exams are together but okay you can still expect you know the difficulty level to be that of aims always set yourself to the highest standard you know try to practice the most difficult questions because if we just go back you see everybody of you gave me the right answer for this question everybody of you gave me the right answer for this question these questions will also be asked i'm not saying that they won't be asked but the challenge the rank your position your getting into the best college or getting into aims which you can will be if you have practiced this question and if you have practiced this question okay is it clear was i know today's session was like really too much but always try to read the question how will you distinguish you have to see if there is skipping of generation if there is skipping of generation it is recessive you have to see if there is criss cross patterning that is x linked you can see if the population is you know 50 50 or it is more males but read the question properly here it was that the following is erroneous there is a problem here you have to identify the problem and they are already telling you you know the unaffected persons are homozygous for normal allele small h so you already know it is a dominant disorder and then when you read the option you know either person 6 or 7 should have the disease if individual 11 shows the disease then this is the right answer because if this individual is affected here it cannot have normal parents in case of dominant disorder good now i see a lot of thumbs ups okay so now this is the most important slide for you guys that genetics will have five questions will which will be 20 marks and 10% of your neat exam therefore you know all these sessions are very important we have tried to cover almost everything you know in these eight sessions we have tried to do you know almost like close to 60 to 70 questions and believe me i have tried to take the most difficult ones because now when you sit to do the questions yourself you know it will be much easier for you if you have followed through the sessions if you have done your homework if you have been very regular and honest and hard working these five questions will be very easy for you because we have already discussed all the different types of questions okay this 10% is a lot so i am hoping that you would be able to solve all of these questions just don't stop practicing there are two model test papers on the portal keep on going through previous year question papers in the continuity material in the end you have hundreds of questions 
so there is no lack of material for you you just need to sit down and practice and this was the last session for this chapter are there any questions this is your time write down otherwise later also if there are questions write in the chat box or write in the comment section so at this point are there any questions if there are not just let me know thumbs ups and then we will end the session so are there any questions So I don't know if the thumbs ups are okay. Now I see that more thumbs ups are pouring up. So don't take genetics lightly. Okay, we tried to do these sessions in a way that it was interesting for you. A lot of you, and I'm very happy that a lot of you were regular. You came every day. You practiced questions with me, and you did everything, all the homework and everything. Good. Then with that, concept tree is always there for you. You can be doctors. keep working hard and hopefully i will see you very soon okay you can be doctors just keep on working keep on practicing as many questions as you can good luck all the best bye